two important points, euthanasia and religion. Mind you, if you take me in a church again and sit me there for two hours, bored out of my brains, it would lead anyone to euthanasia. Anyway, but by the point, we'll start with euthanasia. I think it should be legalised in Britain. I think that if if people find it's too much to carry on, you sign a form, you have clean, clear, sound mind, you should be allowed to be euthanised, because I'm desperate to be euthanised. If I had that opportunity, you'd feel so amazing. You might not have to get done that day. You might not have to get done next week, but it's there for you, and it's a wonderful thing. Because you get put to sleep like animals. We don't let our pets suffer. No, why do you want to prolong their agony? You don't. They have a needle in their arm. They go lovely to sleep, and that's the end of the suffering. All these poor children dying of leukaemia. All the terrible sufferings, people who've got cancer in terrible pain, and different conditions to genetic conditions. There's so many conditions you can have where they are unfortunately dying. I know a lot get better. There's a big percentage of people with cancer and leukemia who always get better now. But the small majority of the ones that do are dying and they're suffering and it's unnecessary should be given euthanasia. And now you can only get it in Switzerland, so you have to have enough money to go over there to get it. And I mean, it's hard for them to travel when they're ill to begin with, even if you've got the money, they go to, you know what I mean? It's not easy. So, I mean, the thing is, and like multi neuron disease and things, I know Stephen Hawking survived it because he was an amazing man, how he was so unusual. But most people, 99.999 of people, are dying in like three years of it, aren't they? It's a horrendous thing where you can't move your muscles to eat. And it's humiliating illness, it's horrible. And a lot of the people choose to die because they don't want to suffer like that. And in this country now, euthanasia isn't passed. And until it's passed, you're going to have all this suffering and other people helping them out of it. Loved ones who are so close to them can't bear it. And then they get put in prison as murder because they've helped them. And that's so awful and so unfair. And I don't like to see suffering. And I'm suffering terribly. I'm suffering emotionally because my heart is entirely broken. My mother died, we, we did never spoke or anything. It was terrible and, and it's not just that. I've been left destitute. I'm homeless and everyone's let me down. People I trusted like Marion in Wales. I've known since I was a little girl, let me down. Everybody's let me down. I have got no genuine friends in the world and no living relatives whatsoever. I'm left now abandoned orphan in the world like little Oliver Twist and I can't cope. I've tried to survive. I'm in, in severe poverty. I can't survive and I have no will to live and I want to die and I'm desperate. And another thing is I just wish there was a power in this world where you couldn't lie, where nobody could lie and they could only tell the truth. I think there was a film years ago, was it Simon Pegg, I can't remember, where you didn't have the ability, everybody was the same on the planet, it was this day and age and everything, but the only difference was nobody could lie. And if you can't lie, you know where you are with people. You certainly do. I'd rather have blunt, honest truth than all this. I'm going to help you. Oh, yes. Oh, you poor thing. I'm going to help you. The number of people who've told me that and they just fuck off and do nothing. Oh, yes. Don't I know it. The list is endless. You could go... And you'd never stop counting the people that have done that to me. Oh, no. Anyway, besides the point now... So um, so this is just goes to show the religious people are the worst, I find. Anyway, sample. You go into Chester. They've got, it's called Miracles Cafe, if everyone's seen it. It's opposite a very nice lady who sells a small amount of wigs in a little wig shop, and it's just opposite there. And a very nice Chinese guy who's got a, um, a shop selling handbags and luggage. I had a suitcase at me many years ago, and I've had handbags in the past when I had money. He's a lovely guy. And it's just located there before you go into the market. You know, before B&M. You just go up there. And it's called Miracles Cafe, and the, the smell of the food is a bit gaggy anyway. And they're overpriced for what they are. Somebody said it was horrible. Anyway, I wouldn't go in and eat anything in there. Anyway, ugh, I can't afford it, but I wouldn't eat that. Ugh. Anyway, the thing is, so um, in there, there was a nice man that was meant to be dealing with me. And he's there only on a Friday. Now, he reminds me of Kelly Williams, a very nice man, lovely, all over you. Oh, you poor thing. He's holding you and put his arms right round you, attaches himself to you like a limpet. Um, and just, but not in a sexual way. He's not a pervert. He's really nice. And just sympathetic. And I thought he was really, he cared and everything. 
And I said, can I come back with you? And he said, he could, I couldn't because he had a, his house was too small and he's got a wife and it's too small there. And I didn't hope he didn't think like that because it's certainly not going to be like that. You know, I mean, like adoption, I mean it. Anyway, because he was so nice to me. Anyway, I go in on Friday. I walk past, I see him. He's behind the, the counter. And he lets it quick. He doesn't want to see me. And I thought, oh, am I imagining this? So I walk around and come back. And he and he thought I'd gone. And then he was there again. He dunked underneath. So that shows he wants. He doesn't want to avoid me because he must think I'm a pain. So that's not very nice. Lied to, feeling sympathetic, telling me to go in every Friday when he's there. And yet he's done a fucking runner from me because I'm a bl- obviously a nuisance. And this is why I want fucking euthanasia. Because no one's got any fucking time to give me any bloody support at all. I get no support from no one. No one gives a fucking shit about me. I'm fucking invisible. No one's helping me. I don't have enough money to eat properly. I don't want to live. I'm, I'm not living. I'm fucking surviving. And it's no quality of life. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in poverty where the government won't help. So why don't they euthanasia us and get, get, give us our easy way out? Because a lot of people are out of fucking enough. And what do they do? They do suicide attempts where they're overdosing. They could damage their liver and kidneys. They could end up on dialysis um, if it doesn't go right. If they jump off a tall building, they could end up paralysed. I mean, throwing themselves on a motorway to you, or that lorry driver that hits you is going to live with that for the rest of his life. He'll need trauma. There's all so many things when you're doing awful suicide attempts. But if euthanasia was introduced into this country, there wouldn't be suicide attempts because they'd have that. And also they wouldn't do it because they'd have that safety valve to fall back on to think if things get too much, I can get euthanized. So what I'm making is complete logical sense that it should be brought in and then there'd be no suffering because you think then if you get really ill, you don't have to take your own life. You can get euthanized um, because you've got euthanasia. You don't have to take your own life ever again. Nobody'd have to because you'd be euthanized. And we'll get back to the religious point now. So uh, that was the end of him. So I thought I'd never set foot in there again. <clears throat> I've been round a few places. So when I told me my mother died in May, which she died in fucking February, and they took it upon her to bury her and not notify me. And this is Flincher Council, who are complete cunts as well. And they have not notified me. Um, and, I, and a solicitor, somebody put me on a helpline, they said it's completely illegal, you can sue. I've got to do that when I'm feeling better any time. I'm not at the moment up to it. Because they obviously they took all the money to bury her, apparently, without my consent, decided what funeral they were giving her. I wasn't notified. And I'm next of kin, there's no other living family. And they stripped, the, obviously stripped the wedding thing, ring, um, wedding ring and their engagement ring off her finger to pay for this as well. And they left me with zero pounds, zero pence, nothing. Because they said they've used it all for the for, um, the, for the funeral. That's, that's uh, Flincher County Council, so they're corrupt bastards as well. And, um, I mean, it's terrible. But I'm going to sue them. And I've been told that I can. This I've, told, I've talked to a few of them. And they said, yeah, but you need to go. I can't get to a solicitor now. Look at me. I'm stranded here. Until I can get back into civilization, and then I can get to a solicitor and sort it out. They're not going to come out to me here. I get legal aid all the way, though. We've trapped that out, and it, it went through all the things that I do. Anyway, that's too much for me to handle, because I wasn't speaking to it, and I can't take it in. So I can't talk about that at the moment. So let's just get back to how these churches have been bastards to me. So they're the corruptest of the lot. The churches are the worst people you find. I beckon if you went into a prison, you'd find the nicest people in a way. Not the mass murderers, but... Some of the people that are doing, like, petty crime, or I don't know, like, fraud and all that type of thing, probably they're really nice people. I'm just saying that as a thing, you know. You probably would. That's the way it is. Anyway, so um, so this is called the Spiritualist Church in Chester. Oh, they're horrible in there. So you've got this awful, creepy man, big man. They're in the late 60s, and this woman, um, his wife, I think, blonde hair, and they're in the late 60s. They're very, very cold and they don't want you there. They make it very... And now, we've been in the past of spiritualist churches in Liverpool, and they were lovely. I went with a friend for a few times, and that, um, that was... She was... Lo- they were lovely. I've been to Rock Ferry. They were really nice. Only went there twice. They were lovely. And we went to, to um, New Brighton, was it? New Brighton, yeah? Wallasey. And they were lovely. They were, that was ages ago. They were always really nice when you went in there. You go, like, three or four times... You don't, and no messages make sense, you just come back because they don't really have anyone like that's the trouble, it's all rubbish really that comes out it doesn't make any sense, it's not like um, qualified people that are doing it like, because um, I don't know whether it's real or not that's why I wanted to know, I'm not sure with what they'd say, you'd say no, it's fake but um, 
then you hear people like Sally Morgan on the telly and how good she is, do you know what I mean? So, like, if you had her and she could come out with truth for your points, then you'd feel a bit better, you'd think there is something. Because I don't know, you know what I mean? Because I'm like atheist, because I think if God is there, he's a fucking shit, isn't he? Because why would he give kids cancer? Why would he do all this for people, you know, Ukraine, everything, me, homeless, I've done nothing wrong. Take her from me, leave me a destitute and orphan in the world. It's just all too much and it's corrupt if you think about it. I think religion is a hobby for the rich because they've got nothing else to do so they can just read the Bible and do all that and go, ha, 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 I've a wonderful life because I've got millions of pounds so I can do what I want because they're too um, wrapped up in their own things to be bothered with actually helping other people. Um, humanity and helping other people is what I believe in. I like Bob Geldof and good people who do that. And they're always atheist. He's atheist, they've said. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, Einstein, anyone with a brain is atheist. And, of course, Stephen Hawking, lovely man, atheist. So there you go, because scientists always are. Because we did have dinosaurs. Because we have the skeletons to prove it. The Earth is round. Oh, la, la. And also, we have NASA to prove there are other planets. We have NASA. We have been into space. And we have found other planets beyond this realm. So there you go. So I don't know. And I believe in aliens, to be honest. I believe in that um, Roswell. I believe in Roswell. I think they were horrible. I think the aliens saw NASA. It hadn't been there for long. And they saw this and they thought, planet Earth, they got some in the communicating. So they went down to investigate from another planet. And they probably took ages for them to get down. And then they were so horrible they wouldn't come back. And I think they poked them, prodded them, did some cruel things in NASA, in that place, in the Roswell, hid it, and they hurt those aliens. And I think they were tortured by people because people are horrible. And they covered it up. They didn't want people to know about it, and I think they did. I always will believe in Roswell because there's too many people saying the same thing for it not to be true. I believe in that, and I, I believe in the aliens. And I, if the aliens were real, if there was an alien, please come and fucking get me. I'm in Chester Service Station. I mean it. I'll come with you. Please, because I know you'd show more compassion than the humans do. Humans don't have any fucking compassion at all. Anyway, I'll tell you what, the religious are the worst. So they're horrible and they don't want you, they make you unfriendly. And then there's another one now, and this is called, well, this is um, in Chester, and this man um, took me to this church. And um, I was sitting there for about three hours again, bored out my fucking brains. And it's called the Welsh Church, and that's in Chester. Oh, my God, where they just read things. and uh, So this vicar gives me his number, tells me to ring if I'm desperate. I don't bother him, then I do, because I am desperate. And he says he's having family time and he's too busy. So I thought, there's no surprise there, then. You do not practice what you preach, do you? Would Jesus be having family time? I don't think so. Anyway, that's the end of that scenario. So they're all as bad as each other. But then again, um, I've heard that Muslim groups and things like that are quite caring. And, and when I was in Birmingham, there was a, a black church, all black people, like gospel singers. And they were born again Christians, and they were very nice. So some are okay, but then some are horrible. Um, they were very good, they were, the born again Christians. Bowler from Birmingham, if anyone can see that, please contact me. My email address is pinkbabybutton6 at gmail.com. I'll give you my personal phone number. Bola or any of that lot from the Born Again Christians in Birmingham. I'd be so grateful if you'd contact me because I'm in a fucking mess now and I need your help. But they were nice people. They were really lovely people. But I'm talking 20 years ago now, so I don't know. She was a lovely woman, Bola. She was really lovely. They were some really nice people. They'd help you. They'd actually help you. They'd give you food. They'd give you money. They'd have you in their own home. They'd have you stay with them. They'd do anything, because that's what Christian people do. But this vicar in this Welsh church, he doesn't want anything to do with anyone. He calls himself Daniel or something. Denial. He's in denial, because a lot of these people, what it is, is... And this man, he agreed with me. He goes to the church still. That's right, I don't understand. And he... Um, says, yeah, because what they're doing is they they got a good pay, so they got a lot of pay, they don't have to do any work. All they do is read that sermon on a Sunday. They're given a house and lots of pay, and they're just off work all week doing nothing, aren't they? So it's a bloody good job being a vicar. It's a cushy number, isn't it, that? When people are working round the clock to get to get money, even student doctors and professional people are working round the hour, round the clock, different jobs to pay bills, to pay their rent, to pay their gas, their electricity and to be able to eat. And then you've got people like this who are taking the piss, 
to be honest. Do you know what I mean? I'll say it like it is because I tell you the truth and why should I lie? I will just tell you the truth and I don't cover for no one. So I just come on here with the fucking basic truth and that's it. Anyway, besides that, I'm just going to say now, um, so I believe in euthanasia and I think it should be introduced into this country and if I was Prime Minister, that would be the first thing on my bloody bill. But also I would be helping the poor, like, because I'm fucking poor now. Well, I wouldn't be if I was the Prime Minister, would I? But, I mean, you know what I mean where I'm coming from. I would not have, um, I deal with the homeless issue, I deal with all that. All the ones on the street then who are homeless, and I'd get them all into re- rehab straight away. All of them into nice rehabs. They'd be all put in rehabs. And if they don't want to go into rehabs, I'd just say, well, what can I do? Because you can't be laying down the street. doesn't look good. Come on. Um, let's get you into a place then. Give them somewhere to live at least. Anyway, um, it's awful. But I just wish people would tell the truth. Because instead of being all over you, promising they're going to help I mean, there was a woman here um, who took me out from here to a church a few Sundays ago. Oh, that was awful. Three hours with singing all non-stop. And then she brought me back. I've not heard from her since. I remain polite and said, did you enjoy it? I said, yes. And she said it was a treat. Well, my word of a treat is going for like a massive Knickerbocker glory or out for a meal or the cinema or giving you a box of chocolates or something like that. That's a treat, isn't it? Go and see a show or something. That's what a treat is. Not sitting in a fucking church for three hours pissed off. I wouldn't call that a treat. No, I know. I love people's definitions of the word treat. It's not my definition anyway. But um, it's awful because euthanasia we need in this country. Um, Switzerland is so ahead because they've got that safety valve. They know if things get too much, all they've got to do is go for that. But, I mean, they wouldn't get too much there because I think they're, they're not having people homeless and in this position in Switzerland or Switzerland and Sweden are very, very good countries where they actually look after people. Because I knew this man in Liverpool, and he's a musician on the streets. He plays the organ. And he dances about. And this was about two years ago. And he told me, he comes from Sweden, and he told me that in Sweden, he said, being disabled and everything, you'd have to give you a lovely brand new place, and they'd look after you. The, the health care, everything, they'd look after you, give you everything. Not like here, where they put you in something with graffiti on the door and you'd have some sexual predators next door and, and um, bloody heroin addicts and goodness knows what with guns and things. You know what I mean? In a damp place, it's going to be dismal and stuff because that's what this country provides, but not in Sweden. Yeah, they look after you and treat you with respect. I mean, it's awful. The way I've been treated has been terrible. I mean, by the council, it's been absolutely horrific the way I've been abused. There's no other way of putting it than I have been abused. And um, no one's doing a thing to help me. And that's why I don't want to live, because I, I'm desperate to kill myself. I've tried, and I haven't succeeded so far. Doesn't mean that I won't again. I'm just going to be more determined next time. It's just plucking up enough courage. Because the student doctor told me what to do, it's here. It's what you do. And he said, I've got a lovely big vein here, if you can see. Big blue, pale blue vein, like the tip, this colour. Because lots of people's veins don't show up. So, well, mine is, because I'm white, very white-skinned, so it shows up. And he said, all you've got to do is don't cut across. You cut down and deep across that vein. You cut through it deep. It's going to hurt, he said, the first time. But after that, the pain goes. Apparently, in 20 minutes, you're dead. Oh, God. I thought of that working. I know, and out of this fucking shit, because that's what I'm trapped in now. I've just had a blood enough. I know, I've just driven mad. And no one helps. I've had not one person do anything nice for me, nothing positive, no. And everyone's let me down, and people I trusted from years ago that I really needed, that I would have helped them. Because I can remember Muriel when her husband Bob died, and we were in the house, and I, I rung, I was really worried about her, and I said, do you want to come and stay with us? Because you've got a four-bedroom house, and we got a spare room and you, you could come and stay with us and and um, we'll look after you and um, we can go out have meals and we can do this that the other will make it nice and you know and, and that's what I was doing for her but on the other foot they won't do it for me and she had all my clothes Gail who was four years younger than me because she was bigger than me as a child because I was a skinny little thing and she was a big child and she used to get into the clothes straight away that I had and um, she had all my clothes. I used to play in a house every day in Wales. And, uh, and then she'd come up to mine for tea and back and forth. And that's what it was like. We were like sisters, really. And, and this is how it is now. This is the thanks I get. It's great, isn't it? How people don't care. 
and have let me down badly. I feel so let down and neglected by people because they're obviously not made the same way as I am because I'm sensitive and I care. But they don't care. They're out for themselves and only themselves. I realise that now. They're thinking differently, made differently. And it's awful because people don't understand why I'm upset. <laughs> I'm fucking homeless. I've got no money. And nobody gives a shit. Why wouldn't I be upset? Use your fucking brain if you've got one. That's what I'd say to them. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to be honest with it all, to be honest. You know, I'm just so hurt by everyone. I've just had enough. I'm getting to the point where I'm losing it and I don't want to lose it because I'm not. I'm going to go insane completely, I think. So I'd rather die before I do get to that point. But I don't want to live anymore. The only time I can cope at all is when I'm deeply asleep and that's hard. I have to be exhausted. And then I eventually get... Because it's rank in that room. It's disgusting. I'm in this rank shithole of a place. And it's, it's grim. It's so depressing. It gets you down. But, I mean, the thing is, when you can eventually get to sleep, it's lovely. It really is lovely. Anyway, um, it's over 20 minutes now, I think, the video, so I could call it a day. But I just thought I'd keep you updated. But it would be lovely if everyone could tell the truth. Then you'd know where you stood, wouldn't you? The only person who's done anything to help me out of them all was that drug dealer in London. Seriously. Because at least he paid for a bloody Hilton Hotel for me for almost a fortnight, and that was lovely in there. So that's the best help I've had off anybody, to be honest. There was a drug dealer in London. It was nice in that Hilton too. That room was lovely, not like this shit. And you had a free breakfast, and the breakfast were lovely. You had scrambled eggs, were lovely. And this lovely lady used to get it for me because I'm disabled. You could have a cheese, like um, you'd have cheese, scrambled egg, a fried egg. I like the vegetarian sausages, tomatoes, baked beans. That's all I ate at the breakfast. Croissants, lots of croissants, hot chocolate. And the various fruit juices, that's all I'd have. Sometimes a bit of cut-up fruit as well, maybe a bit of yoghurt. But I don't like cereal, I, you can't eat cereal, I hate cereal. And I don't like toast. But, um, no, it was lovely. I like eggs, I do. But um, it, it was really lovely. And I don't eat bacon or sausage, but I, the vegetarian sausage was lovely. Oh, it was great. So I had nearly a fortnight of that. I think he paid me for a week, then he put another five nights on, and then because I wouldn't go with him, in the van, give him a phone up, and, and it was a bit, it got a bit scary when he said he'd kill people and things. Oh my God. So he just vanished and no one knew where he'd gone. But this other woman is staying there and everybody, they said, oh yeah, well, we know what he's up to. Um, they get idiots like me, apparently, and put, they put, and I wouldn't even have known because he was quick moving behind me. They'd have put drugs in my suitcase, put me on a luxury holiday, me thinking, what a nice man. I'd have got out, they'd have got on the other end, and nobody would have suspected me, they said, because I look vulnerable, which is stupid, I suppose, that's what people think, and I'm on this walker, limping, so I wouldn't be suspected as much as somebody like that who does not look innocent at all, because he's not, that's why, but he, he looks he looks like he's just come out of prison, so I mean, that's why, so they thought they'd smuggle the drugs on me, because then I look innocent, you see, and I wouldn't have been none the wiser if I'd have gone through customs with drugs. And I could have been arrested. It's terrible what's happened to me, isn't it? I mean, the things you just wouldn't believe it, the things that happened to me are terrible. I've just had enough, I have. Mm. I get this juice because this I can afford. It's one pound, so I mean, for me, it's the only fucking thing I can afford in this fucking spell. That fruit juice, tropical juice. And they just let you take the plastic cups. So I sit out here and have that then. Oh, I'm so pissed off anyway. It's awful being stuck here. But I thought I'd tell you anyway. So um, please email me. You can ask me any questions you like. And because um, I can't leave comments because of the trolls. Just ask any questions you like and I'll get back to you. And if you want to help me or help uh, at all, um, I can give you my telephone number. Thank you very much. Goodbye.